that there are fireworks poofing off into the sky, there are colours, there's children running around screaming and it is so exciting and exhilarating and fun and it's a wonderful place to be but it is also incredibly overwhelming. And I start taking stimulant medication and the medication is like a sort of breeze of sparkly dust has been blown over the fairground and settled upon it and there is just a general layer of calmness that did not exist before. Everyone's almost just in this like, whoa, doing stuff, productivity, down the line, marching, shh, 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 fixing the ferris wheel, off we go, what's the next problem, off we go, and they're on it and they're going and they're going and they're going and it feels good because they've got the momentum to be able to do it in a way that they haven't before. The whole infrastructure of the park and the support systems for the park, just, they weren't built for that. So I'm dropping by to do a bit of an update video of where I'm at four months since my ADHD diagnosis. I released a video I think three weeks or so ago now um, about my medication journey and uh, honestly I released that with like a, I'm a little bit nervous about this but also I like to express myself on the internet so maybe some of my friends will watch it and the response has been amazing like completely blown my expectations out of the water so thank you so much uh, if you found me by watching that video or if this is the first one that you're watching um ah yeah i'm totally just positively overwhelmed and so grateful that you you saw something in that that made you want to see more of me or saw something in that that kind of related to you so thank you um i was actually journaling this morning and i'd asked on one of my posts what you might want to see more of and somebody said a general update video and I was glad, you know, because it kind of, um, it gave me a little bit of a pep to do this video. I'm not feeling great at the moment. Um, you're lucky I washed my hair for you. Actually, you are the reason that I wash my hair. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm going to explain a just a little bit of that and then um, take you through an analogy metaphor. Can somebody please in the comments explain to me the difference between a metaphor and an analogy? Because I keep googling it, but I just cannot find any clarity on that. I'm going to go through an abstract visual representation of my mind before I got diagnosed and how that has evolved and changed since my diagnosis from medication and also just general life epiphanies. It's the only way I can figure out how to express it. And actually thinking through it this morning has really helped me process stuff. So hopefully uh, it can help you do the same and kind of see some bits in yourself that you might relate to. In terms of where I'm at right now is, oh, well, do I, do I want to tell, do I want to tell you? How do I, do I, I, um, I, I'm just, I, I'm batting away some little mind fairies that I'll come back to when I get into the, like, visual in the next section. I mean, I am going to tell you, because why would I be recording otherwise? But basically, I'm just, basically, I'm just completely burnt out at the moment. Um for reasons that will come clear as I explain in the next section how my brain has changed, I think, in these last few months. But basically, I'm off work at the moment. Uh, I've been signed off for two weeks. The headlines are not feeling great at the moment. Um, I feel hopeful, which is good, but I'm just struggling to function. And I actually saw something that was hugely validating, and I'll share this with you, actually. Um, from a very, very well mined article, I'll put it in the description box below. I was reading this the other day when I was just looking for some sense of validation of feeling like a complete failure that I can't just be 100% perfect all of the time. <laughs> welcome to life, welcome to undiagnosed ADHD. Um, but I just thought this was such a good description. So it says symptoms of burnout in ADHD. When you get overwhelmed with work or other responsibilities, you might hit a breaking point at which you burn out. A wall, a wall goes up and you become mentally incapable of completing the tasks you need to complete. That's normal in people who have ADHD, and, or even if you don't have ADHD. But it says, for people with ADHD, depression, shame and guilt are also extremely common during burnout episodes. This is the bit that hit me in the gut. The pressure to live up to others' expectations and the often unrealistic standards that you've internalised after years of feeling like you're not doing enough means that the exhaustion feels like another example of your failure. I know that that hits me because if you could see this, I am like clinging on to this mug for dear life. I'm like, no, no, no better be through. Anyway, headlines are burnt out, taking some time to rest, 
making some time to do stuff that feels good, which that is this for me. But let's get on to what's actually happened to lead me to this point. I'm going to put this mug down because the other day I spilt water, spilt water at work because I was gesticulating so hard while trying to hold my cup. <laughs> um, let's talk about our brains. So before I even considered ADHD as a possibility for myself, I um, was going through therapy 2018, so four, almost five years ago, and a friend said to me, what would your mind look like if you could see it laid out in front of you? And so I came up with this like visual analogy of my mind. And to me, it looks like a green, like green grass, fair ground at night. So there is a, and you'll have to bear with me because although I'm in a creative zone at the moment and I can function in that sense, I'm a little bit slower than normal. So this might take a bit to get out. You can put it on 1.5 times or two times in the settings in the video if you want to speed me up. <laughs> Please do. I know you. I get it. So I imagine a fairground at night. So there is a Ferris wheel, there is bumper cars and waltzers, there are lights everywhere, there are fireworks poofing off into the sky, there are colours, there's children running around screaming and it is so exciting and exhilarating and fun and it's a wonderful place to be but it is also incredibly overwhelming and I recognised this in myself four or five years ago and at the time I was in this place where I was like that is not how a brain works, that is not how a brain should function, there should be order, there should be a filing system, like why is this who I am? And over the last few years, kind of felt through that analogy as well, felt a lot more able to just accept that that is how I function, that is how my brain is. And let's harness the magic and the fun stuff and the Ferris wheel and the fireworks and let's use it in, in the best way. So I had made some progress with that. You just imagine it now. You've got the fireworks going off, and you've got the Ferris wheel whizzing round. And, and by the way, like, Something that is both a blessing and a curse with that is that it means that when I'm excited and creative and happy and I've got a lot of stuff going on that's all joyful and wonderful, it's like it tags onto that Ferris wheel and it whizzes round and round and round and round and round and things just keep generating and it's amazing and it's wonderful. But it's hard to manage the energy that is required to sustain that. It also means that sometimes when those lights die down and when things are harder, and when there is worries and thoughts, wor worries and thoughts and stress and all of that, and they jump on the Ferris wheel, but the Ferris wheel is kind of dark and it's not as fun anymore, like do, 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 do. I really struggle to manage my thoughts around that. So I was aware of all of this, but I didn't really know how to do the stuff to maximize that as my brain. Like I was still using strategies and still not letting myself truly, really deep down, just embrace that that's the way that I function. So September I get diagnosed with ADHD. Well, here's how I'm, ex I think how I'm experiencing that. I'm just gonna take a little break. Oh, oh fun, okay, right. I had, for I had forgotten this. I can't believe I've forgotten this. I just went to pick up my cu cup of tea to have a little rest moment. And Good. this, I don't use it in the back of my vid videos because it, hold on, turn it on. Because it tends to flicker. Um, this is my Ferris wheel. So my friend, you know who you are, my darling, uh, she got me this as part of like a self-embracing of one's mind. Oh my God, it can flash and change colour and stuff. If I can get the remote to work. Anyway, that's just giving me a little bit of love. Also hilariously, because I kept losing all of the bits that go with my different bits of tech, I <laughs> put a note on this that says, I belong to the fun fair light. Beautiful. Okay, so we're working with this fairground right you've got your fireworks you've got your ferris wheel it's all fun everything's going on i say it's fun it's fun when it's fun so it's not fun but it's there i get diagnosed with adhd and i start taking stimulant medication and the medication is like a sort of breeze of sparkly dust has been blown over the fairground and settled upon it and there is just a general layer of calmness that did not exist before. So rather than the children running around screaming frantically, it's just like a chillness. Like everything is still there. There's still the fireworks. There's still the Ferris wheel. There's stuff going on. But generally, it's quite calm. And that feels good. However, the medication has also given the fairground and all of the workers within the fairground a slightly different way of being that they just 
weren't used to. They were used to working in this like haphazard sort of light touch way where one minute they might be like fixing a fairground round over there, but now they're sweeping up something over there and now they're going for a tea break to chill for a while. And they're sort of just used to working in that environment. But the dust has settled from the medication. The whole fairground has this ability to be open for a lot longer. So the open hours have been extended. The intensity of the work for everybody that is working at the fairground um, has intensified because they suddenly feel a much more of a capacity to be able to do it and they don't need to take as many breaks. But the whole infrastructure of the park and the support systems for the park, just they weren't built for that. So everyone's almost just in this like, whoa, doing stuff, productivity down the line, marching, shh, 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 fixing the Ferris wheel, off we go, what's the next problem, off we go, and they're on it, and they're going, and they're going, and they're going, and it feels good, because they've got the momentum to be able to do it in a way that they haven't before, but the park wasn't set up for that, like, the, the, the infrastructure has not yet been set up to support that level of productivity and focus and motivation, basically, is what I'm trying to say about myself. Then what you've got going on is, like, there are zookeepers, because apparently there's a zoo now, that are looking at all of the animals that they caged up this time and they're going, hold on, why have you been keeping all of these beautiful lions and leopards caged in this area of this fairground? Like, they need to be themselves, they need to roam free. So the zookeepers are just like, screw this, they've let the animals out, they're running around wildly, they're refusing to do what anybody wants them to do because they finally realise that it never had to be that way. So they're kind of off on strike causing chaos in one corner. You've then got, like, the self consciousness fairies who have always been present in the fairground floating around but now have grown stilts and they're you know, stomping around like incessantly going but what are people going to think about this what do you think about this how is anyone going to perceive you in any situation even though this is nonsensical because you've always been like this really like complete heightened sense across the whole fairground environment about how it might be perceived by somebody else who is entering the fairground. Wild animals and zookeepers have made their way over to the creative department with the fireworks and they're firing them off occasionally and it feels wonderful and that's where everybody wants to be, but there's still a whole infrastructure of the rest of the park and life that needs to happen. There's been a whole new like set of workers that have arrived. Some of them are perched on little kind of um, like lifeguard towers with binoculars, constantly hyper aware scanning the environment of the fairground, trying to figure out which parts of the fairground have been ADHD all along? I know I'm really mixing my metaphors and reality here, but you just got to roll with it. Trying to constantly hyper aware, scanning, 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 making a reference and a list of everything that might be my personality or might be ADHD or has it always been this way or am I overthinking it? And they're making a list of it because they know ultimately will help me, but it's a really fucking long list. And then the poor Deborah in the administration department that's running all of the, that's running all of the books and the accounts and the like admin that's involved in running this whole brain is just like I'm tapping out I, this is what is going on I'm too tired for this ain't no functioning going to be happening with any of this stuff and while all of this is going on across this whole landscape of this fairground there is the big almighty boss you know the suit sat at the top the guy that runs the profit and loss the guy that is just holding on to all of societal expectations and all levels of like what it means to be a human in the working world is looking at it and going, I mean, I don't really see what the big deal is. It's like, life's hard. People got stuff going on. Don't know why you can't just get on with it. Go to work, do your job, be a functioning adult. Seems fine. Come on, on the clock, off you go. Summer is. I'm tired. I am tired. Uh, that is a lot of stuff. But the boss still runs the show. The big boss, as in the metaphorical big boss obviously in the fairground, that refuses, refuses still to understand and see that that is a lot. He's still running the show. Uh, and we're getting there. But that is where we are at. And that is why we are tired, and that is why doing basic things feels hard. So I don't much have a conclusion to say. Uh, there's some things that say that make me think will be 
strategies for me moving forwards, but I am not in a zone to comprehend what they are yet. I'm in a reflective, see what comes out of me zone. I'm not in a, let's try and put this into anything that makes sense zone, as we might be able to tell. Um, I'm also waiting for a few therapists to come back to me. I'm extremely fortunate that I get therapy as part of private healthcare with work. So that's going to start happening. And that's what I need, basically. That's what I need. Um, so I don't really have any structured advice here. If your mind is is like whatever that just was, I feel you. I feel you. Um, and I feel hopeful. We will get there. There's just a lot to unpack. And I completely underestimated that that would be the case. And you could have told me that. I could have told me that. People can still tell me that. And I still refuse to accept it. Uh, but that is all part of um, the healing that needs to be done, I think. Hey, let me know in the comments what your brain would be if you could look at it out there in front of you. Um, I've got so many video, like so much stuff that I want to share with you in the coming weeks. Um, but for my own benefit, I'm just setting the expectation of like, no pressure because I need to recuperate and just do what feels good and, and only do stuff because I want to and have the energy and mental capacity to do it for the immediate anyway. Like I don't like I don't know how long this is gonna take, which is part of what's scary. We are where we are. Till next time. <laughs>